A lot of this is being led by the defenders uh, for Team USA and just so agile. They love to jump into the rush and they make things happen. Megan Keller has been great. Barnes shoots, scores! Kayla Barnes, her first at the Worlds. Great shot, great goal, two zip, USA. Well, this shot, this shift really belonged to Kayla Barnes. She, she had possession in the offensive zone and then it went to her defense partner and that was Megan Keller who did some nifty work up top. And then that allows her to walk with the puck and that one had seeing eyes as Murkusheva goes down and Kayla Barnes picks that far side beautifully. Kayla Barnes, who is that Olympic gold medalist and just had a, a very small frame, but is mighty on the puck and certainly great in small spaces. She loves to carry it. Here with Kayla Barnes, a California native. In case you don't know who Kayla is, I put together a list of accomplishments. She's got just a couple. Uh, we can start off with she's a gold medalist in the 2015, 16 and 17 U18 Women's World Championships. She was also a member of the 2019 Women's World Championships, where she tied all U.S. defenders for most points with two goals and four assists. Do you know you did that? Yeah. Uh, she was also named the top three most outstanding players. This past year, she was a top three finalist for the Hockey East Player of the Year Award with Boston College. Uh, she'll be heading into her junior year, uh, recently announced, wearing a C on her chest. And most obviously, she was a 2018 Olympic gold medalist. Kayla, thanks for being here with me today. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Did I miss anything on the list that's a favorite accomplishment you want to add? Um, I think you left out some uh, NARCH championships in there, but it's fine. I'll let those slide. I'm really happy. Yeah. Those, were, those were my favorite, so uh, I wasn't sure if yeah. it was your favorite or mine, but um, that's all right. <laughs> Uh, so, just to kick us off, uh, let us know um, where you were, uh, where you started playing hockey, and how you got into the sport. Um, I started playing hockey um, when I was about three years old. I have four older brothers, so they kind of all just played um, roller hockey, ice hockey. They just, I don't really know how they got into it. I think my parents were really into the the kings and the ducks at that at that point like hockey was pretty new in california so they it was kind of booming and i think my brothers just wanted to try so they did that and i kind of just followed their lead i actually started as a figure skater um and my mom thought that i would love it um so i went out for about a year or two that's where i learned how to skate on figure skates and kind of did that and um absolutely hated it um just all i saw was the boys and my brothers on the other other side of the rink and I, I, that's all I wanted to do was go and play with them so finally my parents kind of let me just um, get some gear and go out and try it out and um, that's kind of just how it all started and then I never really looked back after that I loved it I was terrible my first three seasons I never even touched the puck that's what my parents told me they said it was brutal to watch but like I loved every second of it just being out there so that's kind of how I started and um how I you know started this journey I am now parents always keeping you humble huh yeah yeah they're good at that um, <laughs> when did you start playing roller hockey same age I started yeah probably I think I started playing roller hockey before I like formally started playing ice hockey I was pretty young I think like just going out messing around um I mean I started with um an actual club roller team and I was like six or seven ish um and then I took a little hiatus for a bit and then um came back with you know Nabil and all the boys that were on that previous original team and we kind of had a good run and um you know still keep in touch and whatnot but we had um we played a decent amount of uh, seasons for revision and definitely a highlight of my career I loved roller hockey and it was so much fun to just be at the rink all day and play five six games a, a day you know for various teams so that was fun especially when you're a girl because you can play boys and girls so you get to play like 10 games in a day yeah Can't do that and back then I had the back then I had the energy to do that and now I definitely don't so I can't even play two in a day I'm gassed um you actually uh so you talked about your little hiatus from roller hockey I wanted to get into that mostly just because um 
growing up in California, being one of the only girls, uh, you faced some kind of highs and lows. Um, I, I was wondering if you'd tell us uh, like a brief background of, of the hiatus and why you took it and how it made you feel. And then on the flip side of that too, um, like the pros of being one of the only females playing in a, a dominant boys hockey market here in California. Yeah, so um, I played for the OC Blades, I believe that's the name. And um, basically, um, I've I'd been on that team for a couple seasons, and the coach kind of came up to me and was like, "We want you to play down because in girls, you or if you're a girl playing with boys, you're allowed to play down a division." Um, and they were like, "It's not that you're not good enough. We just like kind of don't." want you on this team like basically a backhand compliment like I don't know it's kind of just put a better face like, in your mouth and you want looking to yeah and so like, we want you to play down so um that's that and I obviously was not my six-year-old self seven-year-old self was not very happy about that so I was like I'm not playing anymore I'm done like just took a complete hiatus stopped playing like I mean I I I was so competitive, I still am. I was like, who, who do they think they are? They think they can just make me play down because I'm a girl, like that doesn't make any sense to me. And so I just stopped playing at the women's, I don't wanna play anymore. I'm not gonna play down if I can't play at the highest level with the people I know that I can compete with and what's the point. And so I just like stopped playing and I missed it a lot, but like, I just hadn't, hadn't really found like another place to play where um, they would give me those opportunities. And so, um, State Wars in whatever year that was. I'm unsure. One one of the boys um, got sick, and Nabil was the coach. One of the boys got sick, and um, or something happened, and they needed another defenseman. And um, one of my best friends, um, Lucas Euler, his parents called my parents to like, does Kayla want to come play? Um, and at first I was like, no, like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to, whatever, like, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to go back. And my parents were like, no, I think you should. Like, it'll be fun, like, whatever. Um, so I ended up going, and I think we won that year, and it was awesome. It was so much fun. I had a blast. And then um, we ended up, after that, creating uh, Revision Vanquish uh, 99s, and um, that kind of revamped my um, roller, roller career um, with them. And we you know, did it did um, pretty well, I would say. We were one of the better teams. So um, that was a lot of fun, and I'm glad that I eventually found my way back. For roller hockey, what's your favorite rink to play at in California and why? I really like the um, the Irvine rink, the outdoor one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just have some really good memories there, and I kind of, like, grew up on that rink, I think. Um, you know, I remember in Nabil – literally skating us I've never been skated in roller hockey and he skated us because we had a bad game or something I don't know like whatever like there was a trash can in the middle and I was thinking to myself I'm like why am I doing this like what what is going on but like I definitely think we had some um you know good times there like I just remember being little and like it's an outdoor rink so like you can just skate around and there's people like grilling in the parking lot and like there's games going around on all the time and so I think that's definitely one of my favorite ranks. It's just like a good atmosphere and um, brings back good memories. Um, so being skated in roller hockey is definitely uh, a, a bit rare, but um, that's a good transition into my next question. Um, do you think that roller ho hockey helped your ice game or was it just more, did you use it as a mental break in the summer to kind of stay in the sport, but just have like some fun with it? Um, definitely both. I mean, I think it was definitely was like a good release for my hockey, um, and allowed me to just have some fun, um, but still be like in something that I'm passionate about. But on the on the flip side, it definitely helped me with my game, um, helped me with my hands. Um, you know, the puck's lighter in roller hockey, so you have to be able to like be able to take a little bit off your shot. And Les knows that I would miss high and wide all the time when coming from ice. Um, but you know, once I kind of, <laughs> once I kind of, um, you know, got the hang of it, it, um, it definitely, I think, translated into my ice game, um, in that aspect and helped me a lot as I got older. 
your ice game also translates so well into a roller game because you're a very poised defenseman that likes to hold on to the puck and move it and find the lane. So you definitely took control of most of the roller games against mm -hmm. boys that were twice the size of you because you could do that. Do you think it's easy going back and forth between roller and ice hockey or did you struggle in summer kind of getting your feet under you? Um, I definitely struggled, I think. Um, I thought it was hard. It, it didn't take me long to adjust, but there definitely was an adjustment period. It was harder for me to go from ice to roller than it was to go from roller to ice. Um, going from ice to roller, like I said, the puck is lighter, like the floor is different, it's harder to stop, like just it's hot in there. Um, so like definitely just all those aspects. There's only you know there's only four people on the on the rink, like stuff like that. Um, there's more space. The games just like slowed down a little bit. So I think like going from ice where like I have to make I had to make decisions really quickly or else I would get hit or this or that. I I had more time in roller to kind of like slow the game down and um, make my decisions and stuff like that. And but definitely there was a transition between ice and roller. Um, like I said, going from ice to roller was definitely harder than going from roller to ice. It could have been 65 and breezy at the rink and you ice players would be complaining how hot it was every single time. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't breathe. Um, so I know education is always really important to you growing up. Like if you got a B, you would be in the worst mood for like a week. Um, what did you, What? that's true. What did you want to be when you were growing up and what was your favorite subject in school? Um, growing up, I wanted to be a veterinarian <clears throat> um, I, or like a marine biologist and I die. I love animals. I have four dogs. Um, I just like am enamored with animals. Like I love them and I really wanted to be, my favorite animal is an elephant and I think they're like the coolest thing ever, like being that big and just like so majestic and cat kind and um, I don't know, they're just like, I would love to go and like see one one day, but I really want to be a wildlife vet just to be able to like travel the world and like help animals and stuff like that. And so I really liked science when I was younger. Um, that's definitely changed now, but I mean, growing up, that's what I wanted to be until I really like got to college and things kind of changed for me. So, what uh, what schools did you go to growing up? Elementary, junior high. Um, I went to a couple different schools. I went to Western Christian uh, up until third grade, and then I moved uh, to Eastvale and went to Claire Barton, and then Ramirez Middle School, um, and then I. For high school I moved away and I went to a prep school on the east coast. Through uh, junior high and high school you played multiple sports. What sports did you play? I played soccer and lacrosse. I picked up lacrosse in high school. I hadn't played that previously but I've up until I went to high school I'd played soccer just as long if not longer than I had played hockey. So. Was it hard to pick it? Because lacrosse, girls lacrosse is different, right? They have different rules. Is it hard to pick that up in high school when you're trying to balance a heavy hockey schedule? And, well, I guess you're out of season for hockey, but I know your school load is pretty excessive. Yeah, um, it wasn't easy. I definitely, it was definitely a challenge. I was not very good at first. Like, all I did was play wall ball forever because that's, like, if you can't catch and throw, then you can't play the game. and I had to really get used to the rules. Um, the rules were so different. Like in hockey, you can just kind of like do whatever. And like, if you want to get in front of a shot, you can. Or like, if you want to run here, you can. But like in the cross, you can't do that. Like there's like shooting space and you can't touch anyone. And like, there's a whistle, you have to stop in place. I remember my first game, no one told me that you couldn't run after the whistle. <laughs> and so like, I'm running on the field and everyone's screaming at me and I'm like, what is going on and like one of the girls was like you can't run on the whistle and I was like oh right should have read the rules right right I I did not know that but um it was a blast and I, I like loved being able to like pick up this sport and actually by my senior year I wasn't like that bad I started and I played the whole game I played most of the games um, throughout my career just because like I think that like I would consider myself kind of pretty athletic. So like I just like, picked it up pretty quickly, but I wouldn't say I was like super 
talented at lacrosse, but I worked hard yeah. and like just had fun, just had fun with it. So that was definitely um, something I was happy I was able to do. Um, when your name comes up, uh, getting recruited from California, I always tell uh, this story because I know growing up, you, at least when you were younger, Shattuck, St. Mary's, and Harvard were like, at least what I heard you mention those names a lot. When you were going through the recruiting process, you ended up um, at two different spots. Can you kind of give the background on, um, you know, having those two big names of like the goals of where you wanted to go and then kind of learning through the process and deciding where you ended up and why? Yeah, um, I think we'll start with high school. For high school, I think most kids out of California, if they're going to go somewhere, it's going to, at least when I was growing up, it, it was going to be Shattuck. Like, that's just, that's all I knew. That's all that I had heard about coming from California. So that was just the only background that I had. So that was like this, like, pedestal in my mind of what it meant to be, like, go to hockey and to be able to leave California and go play. Um, as I got older, um, more a couple more girls started to go elsewhere. And I kind of just, was like, oh, maybe I should just look at other places. Like, maybe I don't want to go to a hockey factory where I'm just, like, another number um, on a roster to, like, be good and go to college and whatnot. Like, what if I want to go somewhere and, like, change a program or, like, be able to play other sports or stuff like that? So that's where I kind of made the decision where, was like, I'll, I'll go look at Shattuck for sure. And if I love it, like, like I thought I would when I was, you know, younger, then, okay, I'll go there. But um, I ended up going to a camp and kind of exploring other options on the East Coast. And that's kind of where I found um, New Hampton, which is where I went to high school. And um, New Hampton was great. I had the best four years there. It allowed me to do everything that I wanted to do in high school. Like it allowed me to go to prom. It allowed me to play three sports. It allowed me to hang out with my friends and not have to miss for hockey and stuff like that. And it wasn't all about hockey like granted I love hockey but like when you get to college it's a full-time job and I've fully learned that within in my you know past two years so I was really happy that in high school I got to take those breaks and hockey was serious but like only when it was time for hockey like and when I got to play soccer like that's what I was serious about and when I was time to play lacrosse that's what I was serious about and I got to go to dances and stuff like that so I think like that was really cool I mean I think a place like Shattuck is awesome if that's what you're looking for um just for me, I kind of wanted something different and I wanted to go to a place where I was able to grow as a player and I wasn't just going to be like another um, person on the roster. Uh, the coach there really pushed me and um, helped me grow, which I think was really important. Um, when we were there, we when I went there uh, my freshman year, we barely won 20 games. Like we were just not really a winning team. And by the time my senior rolled around, we won the whole thing. So like that was really cool to see like just the growth of the years and like the impact that like that I could have on a program, um, you know, just by putting my name out there and by playing and giving my all to something. So. And then for college, Harvard was um, definitely, you know, the Olympic coach was there and stuff like that. And I had dreams to go to the Olympics since I was a little girl. Um, so that was definitely something that I looked into and I did, like I said, it's the same thing. That's all I really knew. I didn't really know much about other schools. So um, I definitely visited there and that I have a really good support system um, within my family. So they, you know, really kept me grounded and didn't just let me look at like the bells and whistles of what college recruiting has to give. Um, you know, we really sat down, made pros and cons, was visited a lot of schools, and I kind of just decided that that wasn't the place for me. Um, I really had to look at a lot of different aspects and find what best checked off in every single aspect, and like DC kind of did that for me. Yeah, you kind of touched on a little bit um, here being from California. Um, you know, it's not a, a dominant hockey market, and a lot of kids coming up through the ice hockey systems don't necessarily know, right? So you can hear those names and you have that in your mind. Um, I always just thought it was impressive that you didn't stick with that just because uh, you were stubborn and that's where you wanted to go when you were younger. I mean, you're stubborn, but uh, you learned too. So um, I always kind of use that for young girls as examples now. So thanks for being my example, appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, 
So you're set to go into your freshman year at Boston College. Uh, before that summer, 2017, <clears throat> right? Uh, you get invited to mm -hmm. camp. Um, how did that camp end up? You came out of that camp as, uh, didn't make the squad, but you were uh, like a first alternate, right? Um, yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, so I went to that camp. I had a really good camp. I was really happy with the way I played. And um, I definitely like made a name for myself at that camp. Um, I'd never really been with the national team before. Um, it was kind of a unique situation. Usually you go through the program, you go through the UA teams, and then you get to go to like a world a four nations and then like a world championships and kind of like feel it out. And like, I was kind of just thrown into the fire and like, they're like, here, Olympic trials, like, let's go. And so I just took it and ran with it. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it all out there. I have nothing really to lose. I, it's not like I have a spot to lose. I don't have a spot in the first place. So I kind of just went out there and played the way that I like knew that I could play. And um, I think I shocked a lot of people, um, but I was young. I was only 18 years old. So um, they just didn't want to go in that direction. They didn't, um, you know, they sat me down. They were like, look, you had a great camp. Um, we're going to keep watching you, but we're just going to go with experience um, for this. Um, you know, we've lost the last couple of Olympics and, you know, we, we just think we, this is the direction we want to go in right now. And I was like, okay. Like I was okay with that because I never in a million years expected to be in 2018. Um, my goal was 2022. That had always been my goal. Um, so I was okay with that. I was just happy to be able to put my name out there and get the opportunity. And then I was just like, all right, thank you. And went back home and kind of just kept training, went to BC, um, thought nothing really of it. Um, you know, I was excited to watch them at the Olympics. You know, I had some friends on the team, so I was excited for that and whatnot. And so I was there until about October uh, 31st. And then I got a phone call. Um, that they had been, you know, watching me and whatnot, and they wanted to bring me back for residency um, to join the team. And obviously that was like a whirlwind of emotions and that was crazy. It got, like, I didn't even know what to think at that point. You had started um, school, well, you were in classes, you already played yeah, like, a few games. Yeah, I had played five games. Um, our season had started. I'm in full swing of classes, college life, like what I, what it was. And I this is it just blindsided me out of nowhere, so. Um, that was definitely like a shocking moment in my life. <laughs> so. uh, when you showed up at camp, um, obviously you came a little late. Uh, was it hard uh, being the youngest and kind of coming late? Was it hard to integrate yourself in the team or was that kind of seamless or did you just kind of stay in your lane and do what you had to do? Um, yeah, I thought it was, it was pretty hard for me. Um, if you know me, you know I'm not like this like openly like super loud person that's just like, you know, whatever. I'm more like reserved until you get to know me and then I'm pretty weird. But um <laughs> <laughs> but um definitely when I got there I was I was really nervous. I was scared. Um, you know, I had to live by myself. I had to figure things out by myself. I was just thrown like I said, thrown into this fire where with these adults like they're like women and I'm just this 18 year old girl I'm still asking my mom for gas money like I don't know like I don't even know what's going on and now all of a sudden I have to so pay you rent didn't have your driver's time. license at the time yes I did that is confirmed <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> um, um but I, then I had to you know pay rent and I had to compete at the highest level and I had to cook my own food and I had to like do all these things and I was like oh my god like I don't even know what's going on right now so it definitely was hard and I think that um, it's definitely a weird position coming in late like that because then, you know, like someone else knows that they're on the chopping block. And so like that was a really hard, you know, being the youngest, it's like, not that I'm an easy target, but it's easy to like, ex like exile them out a little bit. And I, I mean, I was lucky that there's some BC girls on the team and most of the girls were super welcoming. I just think that there was um, some weird tension. Um, and there's a lot of other things internally going on with the team at the time that. Yeah, well, how um, could there not be? I mean, you're trying to make an Olympic team. You know, there are cuts. Yeah. And even the best of friends, are, there's tension between them, too. You're just trying to make the roster at that point, right? Yeah. So, you know, just trying to make the roster. And at that point, I just kind of made friends when where I could and slowly but surely, um, you know, as I played more, people started to be like, okay, like, you know, this kid can hang and like, 
and it all worked out and it was great and I made you know some of my best friends um, that I got to play at BC with were on my team and you know so it ended up fun but it definitely wasn't an easy smooth process like one may think it was. So come December you make the roster who's your first call? Mom? My mom come on you know who my you know my mom's my best friend she's been through the thick of it with me and um you know she deserves to know first so she definitely got the call um it was an exciting moment uh, they're super proud of me uh, you know those are your dreams and they're coming true and you didn't expect them to come true so like that was just like a super cool moment for me and um my parents so fast forward to the Olympics, obviously, uh, we don't have to go through the whole tournament, but you guys find yourself in the expected matchup of USA Canada in the final. Um, is there a moment during that game, good or bad, that really kind of stands out to you, like maybe a play or a, a good play or a bad play? Um, it's kind of a different question, but um, outside of winning the gold, uh, anything that happened during that game that stands out to you? Um, honestly, that game is kind of a blur to me. I kind of blacked out during it. It was a lot of, a lot of emotions, um, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of effort put into that game. I just think one moment that was really cool for me, um, I got to start that game, um, being like the youngest on either squad, um, I was the youngest player on the ice. So that was really cool. I got to start with some pretty big names on the ice. You know, Poulin was out there, Casey Bellamy was out there, Brandon Decker, Kendall Coyne, Hillary Knight. Like, they, like, they were all on the ice, and I was standing there at the opening face-off, and I was like, what, what is going on right now? Like, I'm about to play in a gold medal game. Like, this is crazy. So, I think that, like, that moment, just, like, standing there, like, waiting for the ref to drop the puck, and, like, that was a, kind of, like, a big, like, realization for me. I was like, oh, I made it, like, let's go, it's go time. Um, so that was definitely like a really cool moment. And everything after that kind of, you know, I kind of, like I said, I blacked out a little bit, but um, I've watched the game a couple of times and it's kind of cool to look back and see, but I think definitely that's the, the moment that I remember the most. When you guys, uh, you go through uh, overtime, obviously, and you get to shoot out, when you get to shoot out, um, I know Casey Bellamy jokes about this, knowing that there's no way she was going to shoot. Did you think maybe you'd be in the list of shooters or did you just kind of sit down and go, okay, you know, my job's done. I gave it everything I have. Uh, these girls are going to take it for us. Or what did you, were you nervous? I wasn't nervous. I knew that I wasn't going to be shooting. Um, that's not one of like my huge skill sets. Um, it, it never really has been. And we have some very, talented offensive players on the team that definitely take the reins in, in that category and I was obviously happy to let them do that and I had so much confidence in them um I wasn't worried for a second that we were going to lose um it was kind of a really weird feeling even going into overtime we kind of dominated overtime um we were all over them um throughout the game and there's definitely like this fire in the room um some of these girls had lost um a couple Olympics in a row and so, you know, obviously I had, I had never felt that, but that energy that they brought um, to that game made all of us that hadn't felt that never want to feel that. So um, I think that none of us were ever worried for a second because we were going to do it for each other. And that's exactly what we did. And then when it went into overtime, it definitely was a bit like scary. And, you know, that's just, you know, shoot out the scary situation. Um, because it can really go either way it's just one-on-one -on -one and it's up to the goalie it's up to your shooters and you just got to put faith in them but I think we all had faith that we would pull through in one way or another and we ended, and we did so how long did it take you to find mom once you guys won a long time she was like lost in the crowd I was like where are you everyone's parents were on the ice and I was just standing there by myself I was like, she's the mom. No. But she just, she, <laughs> she had some trouble getting down. There's a lot of, obviously a lot of crowds and people trying to get on the ice. But once we did, it was, it was good. And she got on the ice and got some pictures and stuff. So that was a cool moment just to be able to like hug her and say thank you and, and whatnot for all that, you know, they've done, you know, they've always believed in me. And the only people that have consistently always believed in me, um, you know, since I was born. So, um, you know, never take for granted that and what they've done. 
For sure. Well, we'll transition a little bit uh, to some kind of fun off the cuff questions. I actually asked um, Molly Schaus, who's a USA uh, alum and a BC alum too, uh, that we work with kind of what uh, she's done a lot of these interviews, obviously, um, and what she thought were some kind of fun, different questions. Um, one of her first ones is obviously in the Olympics, you're in Pyeongchang, you've traveled to Finland, you've got a lot of international tournaments. When you come back from those international tournaments, what's your go-to uh, meal in the United States? Like when I go home or just like the first meal that I choose? First meal you choose. Whatever. So you would want to eat. <sighs> My dad's tacos. They're so good. They're very good. I'm a huge um, Mexican food fan. So usually when I come back, I get some sort of like Mexican food, like whether that's Chipotle or whether it's homemade from my dad or something like that. That's usually what I go to. And then I always eat a lot of ice cream after a competition like that. Um, ice cream or frozen yogurt? No, ice cream. Ice the cream? whole works. Yeah, I'm straight up just I love ice cream. It's my weakness. I have a big sweet tooth, so I definitely get at least a pint of something and just eat it for fun. Perfect. <laughs> Solid reward. Um, uh, we touched on a little bit, but you going into camp, it was very intimidating. Who was the most intimidating player, uh, let's say, to play against in camp for USA? To play against? Probably, uh, I would say, like, I was pretty scared of uh, Casey Bellamy. Um, she was my deep partner, but like, she was also scary. She goes hard, she's super serious, and she doesn't take any, any crap from anyone. Um, so, you know, she <laughs> she's awesome. And she's, I love her and we have a great relationship, but definitely going in, I was like, oh my God, I'm playing with Casey Bellamy. Like she's a two time Olympian. Like she was definitely scary because you know, these girls have so much experience that like that I don't have and they and they bring that confidence to the table so that was that she was definitely someone that I was a little bit afraid of um going in um to you know that residency if you could take and any player this is the uh, USA Canada Finland anyone um if you could take one skill from one player who would it be and why I would take Megan Keller's slap shot because it is a bomb and when it hits the net, it goes in. And <laughs> she is so good at that. And, you know, I've passed her many of one-time shots and I've just watched her unleash the missile on people and people just literally dive out of the way because that will break your shin. So I think that if that's, I think for my position, I play defense, so like that's something that I would love to have um, in my wheelhouse, but I simply do not. So, <laughs> but I simply do not. You'll do get not. there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one day when you grow up, you'll get one. Yeah, maybe if I keep growing. <laughs> um, this is another question from Shousey that I thought was a really good question. Uh, when everything in a hockey game is going wrong, uh, what part of what area of your game are you most confident in? Oh, that's a good question. That's why I asked. When everything when everything's going wrong, I'm most confident in. Like, are we talking about in myself? Like, yeah. What skill I'm, of your game? I'm in my game. I'm just most confident in in my brain. Like, I think that I have a knack for seeing the ice, and that's part of what has helped succeed um so you know when nothing's going right when I'm bobbling pucks this and that like I know in my head then like I know where the puck should go I know what lanes are open I know like where I need to be moving in the defensive zone or where I need to what lanes I need to be cutting in in the offensive zone and so and that comes naturally to me and so I know that if I just like stop thinking about it and I just do it because I do it naturally when I'm not thinking then things will start to happen and some days you're off and you can't handle a puck and you turn pucks over and I've turned over many of pucks and it's not been a good situation but at the end of the day you have to know that like I mean you never mean to like make mistakes like you never you never like oh I'm gonna go turn the puck over at the blue line so they go and score like that would be super cool 
you know, yeah, at the end of the day, you're trying to, you, that would be so cool. Like, our, our boy would love that. You know? <laughs> um, you know, you're trying to make a play and you have to be confident in your, your decisions. And, you know, sometimes I, I'm confident in my decision and it doesn't work. And, you know, and that's, that's fine. And I talk through it with my coaches and I'm like, look, this is what I saw. And I didn't see this and like, whatever. And you just, you just learn from it. But at the end of the day, I think I'm most confident in my brain and how I see the ice and the plays that I'm able to make through that vision. And again, that's also why I said your game translates, your ice hockey game translates so well to roller, just because that's roller is more of a visual game, right? You have more time and space with the puck to create lanes and, um, you were definitely excelled at that in roller. If you could guarantee success in any other sport other than hockey, which sport would you play? Soccer, hundred percent. Soccer. Beyond that, I mean, I, U.S. Women's National. I mean, sport? yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd ever be good enough to make that team. But I said guarantee um, success. Okay. Well, if I tra- if I put as much effort into soccer as I did hockey then maybe but I love that sport more than like just as much as hockey it was um you know it like if I was as good at soccer as I was at hockey it honestly would have been a coin flip for me um on what I was going to choose um I just happened to be much better at hockey than I was at soccer not that I don't love hockey I do I love them equally but I love it's I think it's rare to love two sports the same and I loved that sport and I was passionate about it um but, you know, I kind of made a decision when I started to excel a little bit more in hockey that, um, you know, I was going to focus my time and effort on that and, you know, try to go places with that. So, but definitely love soccer and would that would be so cool to be on that, on that team, that women's national team and do what they do because they're great. You were a really good soccer player. You would just run girls over and get penalties. Yeah. Watched you that many times. Uh, all right. So, are you down for some trivia? Yep. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, we missed you here at the rivalry game that we hosted in Honda Center, just because uh, on that squad you were not eligible because you were a college player. Um, we did a fun thing. We made a a, a U.S. Women's um, or actually just a women's hockey history timeline, and out of that kind of came uh, five trivia trivia questions that we put around the concourse. So. I'll ask you those five, and I actually printed out our little graphics cards. I found them on our um, on our online drive. Uh, so first question, you are, I'll give you a hint, you're not the answer to this question. Who are the shortest and tallest women's women to play for Team USA in the Olympics? Erica Lawler is the shortest. Yep. The tallest? This is a hard one because there's a couple that I think that you'll answer. But is it Angela Rogerio? No. Is it uh, was it someone that was on our team? Yeah. Is it Megan Kelly? Close, but no. Who is it? The Niners. Yeah. Lee. Dang it. This graphic is the size, by the way. <laughs> Lawler is not that short. But yeah, Lee Steckline, at least she's listed. They could probably battle it out to see who really is taller, but she's listed yeah. at six foot, and I think Keller's listed at like 5'11". 5'11", okay. Um, so this one's a little more history, but I'm confident you can get at least a couple of these. So far, there are three players who have won four Olympic medals. Who are the three? Four Olympic medals in ice hockey? Yeah, women's ice hockey. And- Angela Ruggiero, Julie Chu. Yep. Two. I don't know. You want it? One. Yeah, I want it. Well, three out of two is good. Jenny Potter. Dang. Jenny Potter. Yep. All right, then this is another hard question. Who holds the record for the most points in a single Olympics? And as a bonus point, how many points did she have? Is it Hillary Knight? No, but I think Hill was close. Um, I'll give you a clue. (laughs) 
Well, that eliminates one. I was going to say she's an answer in one of the last questions. It's not Angela Ruggiero. Is it Jenny Potter? It is Jenny Potter. Do you know how many points? And wait, how many points? How many points? Um, 10. Close. 12. 11. Nice. All right. Uh, I'll give you a hint. You're one of the answers to this question. Which three Olympic gold medalists, Olympic gold medalists, were born in California? Kayla Barnes. Yeah, me. Two more. And Angela Rio. Yep. It's kind of a trick question. No one on my team. Someone must be on the ninety eight team. No, on I'll she was on your two thousand eighteen. On my team. Yeah. Was she a player? Yeah. Oh. Who was born in California? Technically, Hillary Knight. Oh, Knighter. Knighter. Technically, yeah. Yeah, that's why I said it's kind of a trick question. All right. She's an Idaho native. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we would all agree on that. <laughs> but birth certificate says born in California, so we'll take it. All right, last question. Uh, I'm interested to see if you get this right, actually. In 2018, you guys went in the shootout. Which three players scored in shootout? In, on our team? Yeah, for US. Kessel, Kessel, Marvin, and Lamarell. Ew. How many saves did Maddie Rooney have? Quick math. Three? Close, four. And then- Four? Yeah, four. The Didn't they last, scored on twice? She got scored on, oh, she got scored on one? Uh, no, twice. Uh, twice. She got scored on twice. Three times? Twice. Oh, she made four. There's only five. Yeah. Three, only five. Oh, we shot six times or twice. Yeah, okay. yeah. you doubled up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, then last, this isn't a trivia question. You have to find the mistake in this graphic. Uh, luckily, Chelsea caught this before we printed it. And this is an old one because it was the only one I can find on my computer because we're not in the office. So find the mistake. Um, is that not Jocelyn? I'm actually not positive. Molly says it is, but you're on the right track. That's not the answer. Oh, that's Hannah Brandt under over Amanda Kessel. Yep, yep. Luckily, Molly's caught that before we printed it. Uh, so we were good there. All right. Last thing before we finish up. Um, any advice that you would give to uh, boys and girls playing in a in specifically a non dominance growing here but in California what advice would you give uh, to the boys and girls uh, growing up here to be successful in the sport I mean I would just say work hard and if you have a dream like just follow it like you you never know until you try until you step outside your comfort zone you don't know like your potential um, it definitely wasn't easy for me to leave at 13 years old and move across the country and live by myself now I'm 21 I've been living by myself since for seven years like and so I think like but that's because I had a dream and I wanted to go after it and I think if you just work hard and you set your mind set your mind to something you you can achieve anything that you want so um you know, be passionate about it, put your effort into it, um, care about it, um, study the game, um, if that's what you want to do, whatever, whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be hockey, but whatever you want to do, whatever you're passionate about, like give 100% to it, and definitely don't stop chasing your dreams because you fail, um, you know, I've failed many of times, so um, you got to fail before you succeed, I think, so that's, that would be my advice to young kids and anything's possible just because you're from California in a non-dominant dominant area for hockey doesn't mean that you can't be successful and reach the goals that you want to. Well, and you're proof of that too. And uh, just selfishly, I have to thank you for setting um, a great example for boys and girls here in California. Um, with the adversity kind of you saw growing up here, you always carried that with grace. And I know um, even if you were to walk through a roller hockey rink or an ice hockey rink, there are always murmurs of like, oh, that girl's so sick out there playing. So 
you definitely set kind of the underlining tone uh, here for women's hockey. So thank you for putting us on the map a little bit. Um, and thanks for spending time with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.